Come on. Come on. There you go. Are you ready to be free? Look at that pretty one. Well. There you go. Woohoo! Another free one. Maybe I should start from the beginning. This all started when, unbeknownst to me, black swallowtail butterflies were laying eggs on the dill plants in my herb garden. The way I discovered that they were doing that is one day I went out to check on my dill plants in early spring and found a big caterpillar on my dill plants. I didn't know what kind of caterpillar it was, but my first thought was, you're not going to eat my dill. So I plucked this big worm off my dill plant, took it inside and put it in a jar and looked it up on the internet. Look at her lay that egg right there. I found many references that indicated that it was the caterpillar of a black swallowtail butterfly. I try to say that ten times fast. They love to eat dill, parsley, and fennel, and a few other herbs and plants. So I thought it would be very interesting to see this caterpillar go through its metamorphosis into a black swallowtail butterfly. But in order to do that, I have to feed it. So I was out there every day cutting my dill and bringing it in and feeding this caterpillar in a jar. So over the course of the summer, I learned quite a bit about the life cycle of a black swallowtail butterfly. And it all starts with this little egg right here. It's truly a miracle of nature to see the metamorphosis that goes on from this little egg to the butterfly that we just saw. And from that little opaque sphere emerges this guy. This is the first instar pupa of a black swallowtail butterfly. It's the first caterpillar stage. It's only about two millimeters long or about a quarter inch. Here I'm trying to stimulate its osmotarium, which is a defense mechanism. Two little horns that'll stick out of his head, soft tissue horns that emit chemicals, defense mechanisms. But he wasn't sticking them out at the time. We'll see them on some older caterpillars. Here is the second instar stage of the caterpillar. There is a distinct color change and it's about twice as long. And the little black spiky things all over its body are definitely more pronounced. I'm changing the light here. I'm hand holding a light because it was kind of dark when I was filming this, just trying to get a good light angle on it, which added kind of a neat effect. These guys are voracious eaters. They eat constantly. Food goes in one end and comes out the other. And here, this second instar stage is about to poop. And you can see it's lifting up its, its butt there and a little poop will drop out. This goes on constantly. The poop is actually a very good fertilizer from what I hear. This is the third or fourth instar stage. They go through five. And you can see this caterpillar is definitely willing to extend its osmotarium. Osmotarium is a defense mechanism that excretes two chemicals which are said to have a foul odor and taste, I guess, to prevent predators from consuming it. What I never read about and observed here was this caterpillar is secreting a liquid from its mouth as well. I don't know if that's the same chemical compound that's in the sosmetarium. I'm not sure, but it was interesting to see that once the bug was left alone, and they are bugs, I guess, it reconsumed the liquid. I guess they don't want to waste very much. Here are a few caterpillars in the adult larva stage. This is exactly what the caterpillar looked like that I first pulled out of my garden. The red arrows are pointing to skins that have been shed from the previous stages. This is the final stage before they pupate into a chrysalis. They pretty much from here just eat and poop and eat and poop. All the black dots you see at the bottom there are castings from the caterpillar. These are inside a gallon pickle jar. I'm fascinated by everything about this insect. I mean, who doesn't love butterflies? Over the course of the summer, I released well over a dozen butterflies that I raised from little caterpillars in a pickle jar. Here they're eating the cellulose fiber from the stalks of a dill plant. You can see on the right side of the screen how the the cellulose fiber has been chewed off. I'm also fascinated by the propulsion. Look at the, the lighter one in the background there. I haven't defined all of the parts of their propulsion and their gripping and they spin silk, but it's just amazing. So as much as they're eating the bark here, what they really love is to rip into some tender dill shoots. Watching them eat that is quite fascinating. Just for reference, this is shot in real time right here. There is no time compression or speeding up of the clip. This is as fast as this caterpillar is moving. 
It is just so incredible that Mother Nature and Instinct let this bug know how to find the end of a sprig of dill and just grind it into its head like a sausage through a meat grinder. So this crazy creature uses its six monster-like spiky feet things to convey her food into its complex mouth while holding on with eight feet in the middle of its body and two feet on the end of its body while attaching itself with silk at the same time. Pretty impressive. I don't know if these things have eyes. I've not been able to determine that. I haven't found anything in literature indicating eyes, although many spots on its head look like eyes, and that one spot in the middle of its head could possibly be like a photosensitive membrane or something, but I'm not sure. This is sped up about eight times right here, so this will give you a good idea of the logic, if there's any, of how this caterpillar finds the end and eats it down to a joint and then goes back up to the other end and then eats it down to a joint. It's quite interesting. You really get to see the pattern in, in faster motion. Here's an adult caterpillar getting ready to take a poop. Notice the strand of thread from its, its rear end to the other branch. I always notice with most of the worms, they are always attached by a strand of thread. I'm not sure where that thread is generated from, but I know where this poop is generated from. The poops are like dimpled, as you might be able to see there. And uh, green and black in color, mostly green, but then they seem to fade to black. Again, I think they're good fertilizer. I've collected some of them. Okay, back to the fascinating eating behavior. But I guess as fascinating as the eating is, they can poop while they eat. Notice here, the out of focus rear end of this caterpillar. I'm gonna slow it down for you here and you'll see a poop drop out. Here it comes. Bloop, and there it goes. All right, I'm gonna speed this up, I think about 16 times, so you can really get to see the pattern of the eating. So after a few weeks of hatching and having gone through five different stages of larva development, the caterpillar starts getting chemical signals that it's time to pupate into a chrysalis. So typically the pattern is they stop eating and they seem to travel. When out in nature, um, I've read that they travel off of the host plant and go hide on a plant that they really don't eat. So I noticed when the caterpillars were walking around a lot, it was time for them to crystallize, if that's the word, crystallize, pupate into a chrysalis. So here's two active caterpillars feeding up top. This is sped up about four times and two caterpillars lower down resting. Here's a little squabble with some serious osmaterium action by the black worm on the left. This worm was blacker than all the other ones, I don't know why, and this is the one that you see hatching out in the beginning of the video. Once the adult larvae settles on a location to start pupating into a chrysalis, it begins to spin a strand of silk thread that it uses as a sort of cradle to hold its body. It first attaches the silk on the left and right side of the twig below its body, and then it uses its mouth. I don't know if it's generating the silk from its mouth or if it's just using the mouth to guide the silk. But you'll see it's going left and right, building this strand of thread around its backside. You'll also notice if you look under the branch that this caterpillar is on, there's a little aphid bug. I didn't notice this little aphid as I was videotaping. I only noticed it later when I saw the footage in the computer. So this is in real time here so that you can get an idea of how fast or not so fast this caterpillar builds this cradle out of this strand of silk. I guess it's many different strands put together to help build the tensile strength of the, of the silk. So it keeps going left and right, left and right, over and over, and it does this dozens and dozens of times. Again, this is in real time to give you an idea of how long it takes for one cycle to go from left to right and back again, building this cradle of silk. And I'm still using a handheld light trying to illuminate different angles of this process, so I know the light keeps changing abruptly. But it didn't affect the focus and intensity of this caterpillar building its pre-chrysalis cradle out of a strand of silk. But maybe that little aphid didn't like all that changing light, because he's out of there. It's amazing how intensely and deliberately this caterpillar builds this cradle out of a strand of thread. Having never done this before, it seems to know exactly what it's doing. And I can see coming up here that it is multiple strands of thread being layered on top of each other. You'll see as it keeps coming down here, a separate strand of thread 
looks like it's coming out of its mouth, and it uses its mouth parts to add it onto the main strand. This is 20 times faster than normal speed right here. It takes quite a while for it to build up this thread to where it's happy with it as being its cradle. Then it seems to maneuver it into a groove on its back, and it settles in to go through the metamorphosis processes of becoming a chrysalis. Here is the larva attached only by the silk cradle near its head and by its rear two feet to the stem of the plant. From here the caterpillar actually shrinks in size before shedding its skin for the final time emerging as a cocoon and going into a state of suspended animation. So I have three left. Two on sticks, this guy. Poor girl. I'll put you back in the jar. And this one is ready to go. Well, I'm almost ready to go. I have one inside that fell off the stick and the hatch in a tray. Okey doke. I'll release it right out here in the garden where it was hatched. Well, at least not hatched, but the egg was laid. And I've got a couple more in here. Come on, you, get some sunshine. Let's see if I can get you out without disturbing those other cocoons. What's going on here? Here, come to my hand. That's that's it. There you go, get some sunshine. I'll put you back on the dill plant where your mama laid your egg and you can warm up. Go ahead, get on there. There you go. That's where you started. Warm up those wings. And go have a life. Come back in the spring and lay eggs, I'll have plenty of dill. Look at that reflex, huh? How pretty. Looks like you have eyeballs at the bottom of your wings. Here is a newly hatched black swallowtail butterfly taking in the sun and pumping fluid into its wings. The fluid will eventually harden and become stiff and give its wings structural integrity before it feels comfortable enough to fly off into the breeze and start the whole process all over again. Here's a chrysalis that is going to hatch very soon. You can actually see the colors of the wings and the patterns of the wings through the skin as it thins. I thought this one would hatch last night. I'm hoping it'll hatch during the day so I can film it. I'll try to spin it around here so you can see the patterns. See the underside, you can actually see the wing colors. I stuck it in the dirt here in my herb garden, hoping it hatches out. We'll see what happens. I've seen a couple wiggles, and the color is changing on the backside too. It's like a chemical process going on or something. Or it might be eating away that outer skin. But it's getting close, I think. Here is the difference in coloration of a cocoon that's ready to hatch on the bottom as opposed to one that's got a few more days to go on top. Thank you.
That's not the breeze moving that butterfly's wings as much as it is it doing it itself. Pumping the blood into the wings. Looks like a face right there. Look at the eyeballs. This is one of four chrysalises I had left. So now I have three, but I think one has expired. It's been crystallized, if that's a word, for a really long time and its colors have been weird. So I don't think it's gonna make it. That little thing to the right of the upper chrysalis that it's hanging on, that's the discarded skin from the caterpillar that they shed out of when they go into the chrysalis form. And it's stuck there by a strand of silk. Ah, the sound of weed whackers and leaf blowers. I heard a hawk screaming in here before in the woods, but I couldn't locate it. it sounded like a red-tailed hawk. I haven't seen one of those around in a while. All right, your wings are almost fully extended. Mm -hmm. 